We are currently building a model railway from scratch, and for this particular episode, I have already successfully installed the first turnout. This allows our little steam locomotive to now shunt over to this track and then come to a complete stop. After that, we turn out the turnout back to straight and proceed to pick up the second train. Namely, our construction train, which is also allowed to turn on the light, and then it may continue to this small marshalling yard. And how we wired that, I'll indeed just demonstrate to you right now in a short video series, or rather, in this particular episode today. Because it's simple. You see no cables around here in front of me. Looks good from above. Everything is very, very neatly put away. And this is also, for example, a nice setup situation now, if you want to play on the carpet, for example. So if you want to keep clearing the track over and over again, let's take a quick look under the track by pressing stop here on the mobile station and taking a look at this turnout that lies underneath. Then, as you can clearly observe here, I have thoughtfully installed a little something, specifically a turnout decoder and furthermore, a turnout drive. So here is an electric turnout drive that you can clearly see here. And down there is a built-in decoder and it just clicks under a track precisely like that. I'll take another track, another turnout for comparison. There are indeed many different turnouts at Marklin. Find them in expansion packs or buy individually. And here we have, for example, a brand spanking new curved turnout, a right turnout. And this turnout, for example, is still completely empty at the bottom. So there is no electric turnout drive in there and also no turnout decoder, with which you could then, for example, turn out such a turnout directly with the mobile station. And we're going to electrify them right now and also digitalize them at the same time. By the way, this is the mobile station with two functions. You can choose down here if you want to control a locomotive. This looks very nice in white. Now we're inside the locomotive control and would drive our steam locomotive around a bit if it were on. And here we have the symbol for the turnouts or also signals later on. And then we can press here and then you can turn out here and can turn out a whole lot of magnetic articles. How many are there in total? So here we can turn out over 320 such articles here or 320 articles we can turn out. And then you have them on this digital control panel, so to speak, and can then turn out a larger railway completely digitally with it. Of course, you can also still turn out a turnout manually as usual. So if you prefer these manual turnouts, then you can continue to do it by hand here, but we can now also digitize them. So I'm actually reinstalling this here once again because it was practically already finished. And now we just take this curved turnout, this unoccupied one, and get all the accessories we need for it. For that, I'll just reach back for what we precisely need. We need a turnout decoder once, and indeed, we also need a turnout drive, specifically an electric one. I'll show you rather quickly what that looks like. This would actually be the turnout decoder. We'll unpack that one right now. Looks like a computer board. And there you can also set an address if you have a lot of turnouts so that your mobile station recognizes whether it's turnout 1, turnout 2 or turnout 120, depending on what you're planning to do with your crafting. And this drive, we'll connect it with this decoder. Let's get started, because it is simple with the electric turnout drive. I'll just carefully unpack this one right here. Then, you can actually see everything that's included inside the package. That includes, indeed, all the essential accessories you need for different construction techniques. Here is the small instruction manual. And there, you can already see in the photo what it should ideally look like later, right under the turnout. Here we have the image for a completely normal straight turnout, now incorporating it into a curved turnout. Discussing a turnout, I need to quickly show something. There are various straight turnouts. Here's a slim one. Look, so if you really want to build larger systems, then there is the turnout that becomes a bit shorter for smaller systems, and there is the turnout that becomes so slim, then you can truly build realistic large stations. So if you want to build a bit bigger through the apartment on the carpet or want to build a larger system, then I can also highly recommend these slim turnouts to you. That looks very, very chic. So I'll just put that aside for a moment and then we'll build the... Oh, I have one more. Look here, a turnout. Can I reach behind? Here we see a three-way turnout. Look, it's going to go in three directions in a moment. That means here the train can turn right, continue straight ahead or turn left. For that, there is a different decoder. Looks a bit different. Then you just have to take a look at the Markland site to see what it looks like. And then it goes into a three-way turnout. It's called a three-way turnout. 
So, I'll just put that aside here for a moment and then we'll come back. So, we were eager to get started with the instruction manual and delve into what was all included in the package. This is precisely what I have in my hands at this moment. Namely, a variety of accessories, including small plugs and screws. We probably won't need all of those. Then there is a turnout drive in here, and there is already a cable attached to it. And if, for example, you now want to control analog, not digitally, then everything is actually already prepared. Then, you can now take these plugs here, and then, with a classic old analog control panel, you can effortlessly turn out the turnout from curved to straight with just a push button or with a turnout. Then, you really need these three plugs. So, red for round, green for straight, and yellow is essentially the power for the turnout. But we're not going to do that now. Instead, we're going to connect the turnout digitally right away. And for that, we can now just carefully, I'll show it very carefully, pull this cable out. That was relatively easy. And now we can put that aside and don't need it. The second thing we find here in the package is a bit of jewelry accessories. And what we see here is a concrete slab. We can certainly use those items later and can easily clip them to the side here, for example. In fact, I actually have this turnout lever right here. I already took it down here at the turnout. You see, there's no one there anymore. And then you can decorate it a bit here and say that it should later look like a modern turnout. Then, it is done here in this direction. I believe it continues on just like this, exactly, and then it resembles a modern turnout here on the side. However, you can also undertake something like this, placing a soft transformer on it. Then, it looks very modern, akin to what we see now in the current railway system, when you step out into the real world. So, the key thing is this, the tiny item in my hands. These are two screws, needed soon, because this drive must go under the turnout. For that, we just turn it over. And now, it would be truly exciting if I hadn't stuck out my tongue yet, because we need to go down here for a moment. I'll just take this one from the other turnout for a brief moment. So, essentially, this is what these little components look like. And if you detach them, they are still connected in the original setup. Then you can manually turn out the turnout by hand once again. Wrong way around? So, now you can shift them by hand again. Please don't lose that. Then click that again like that. And now, let's take a closer look at the back. You see, it appears very small here, if you observe such a tiny little cone here. Can you recognize him? I'll keep it like that. Yes, now you can recognize it down here, there on the side. There he is. Do you see that? Right? Exactly. And we click it now so that it sticks out. And then, we can actually take this turnout drive here, with the Macklin sticker facing upwards and just carefully place it in here. Then you can see it fits quite well in there. And here are two small holes at the top of the turnout. That's where it will simply be screwed in. If you've done everything correctly, then you can now see then this tongue down there moves along and will then later be turnouted electrically. So, I'll just put this aside for a brief moment and then get a screwdriver so we can securely screw it tight. So, now the question is, what size was it? I'll bring three screwdrivers, hoping one fits. Oh. Let's see which one it is. This one right here. It feels good. It lifts. You best do that on a flat surface. That's why I'm setting this aside now. Or make room for me here. Can you see it well? I'll show it from above. Maybe then you can see it when I screw this in. Now the screws just go into these two holes here. And with that, I'm actually going to meticulously place it right here. And see if you can actually observe that happening. So there's the very first screw securely in place, now right here on the side. I hope it can be recognized to some extent. Here on the side is the first screw. So now the second screw goes here on the side, down there, and is simply screwed tight. The significant advantage of this approach is that if you play on the carpet later and persistently keep putting away the tracks, the drives won't fall out. They are now securely in place. And just like that, they won't fall out when you meticulously clean up the turnout. So, now we've actually done everything right, but we still weren't very smart because we have to put a cable back in there and if we've already screwed it tight, it's hard to get there. It still works, but in the best case, you should first build up the drive with the soft decoder, then the digital one, then you'll get there better. This here is now the digital turnout decoder, which, as you can see here, 
is precisely what it appears to be. It is packaged here in some kind of plastic, and there is also a set of instructions included. I would strongly recommend you keep that, because there's a little address book inside. And that would be the turnout address book, so to speak. One could describe it that way. And there are indeed all the addresses contained within it. If you happen to have a very, very large number of turnouts, how you can then program them later on. Because here there's a little mouse piano, also called a dip turnout. Depending on its setting, the turnout has the address 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. And if you now have a turnout with the number, what do we have here? Really? 511 goes up that far, okay, at DCC. So, there are two different protocols, and in the MMM protocol, I believe there are a bit fewer. Then, you can set many different addresses here, and then at the top is always this position of this turnout. But I'll show you right away, directly on the decoder, we'll just quickly install it, or rather, I'll carefully snip it open. My scissors were right here. So, carefully cut it open, so that you don't accidentally cut any cables. So, that can indeed be removed later. And now we have this decoder in place. That's what it looks like. I'll just pull over for a moment. And there are also a few cables included. And look, this cable with the green plug at the bottom of the side, this one now goes into the turnout drive. By the way, back here you see this mouse piano I mentioned. We'll take a closer look soon. Now we take the turnout, and then you see, oh, very important, a small green notch here. Can you recognize them? Very small, isn't it? I'll keep it very quiet in here. Here is such a tiny green notch, and here is also such a notch, which now has to be on top from my perspective. And then it goes in there at the bottom. You see what I meant by the fiddly? That's a bit mean now if you've already screwed on the drive beforehand. So in the best case, we quickly take him out. That happens fast. Let's make it easier for us. It's supposed to be fun too. So go ahead and screw out again. Better both, so we don't bend him. A shame. So, and now we take out the drive again, and now you can see better where it needs to go. So here on the side, you now see this notch, and there, just like that, it now goes on very easily. That's it. If we have it, we can also take the second cable. We need this one out of the package. This red, brown and yellow cable serves as the vital connection for later for the track, guaranteeing that this turnout drive also receives power, along with this decoder. And we plug this in here on the side. Same principle. There is also a small white notch there again. And you see it slides in easily. Is it correctly oriented? If tight, stop. Don't force it. That means it's the wrong way. So, if it slides in very easily, like here, then everything is indeed correct. So now, you already have the quasi-result in hand. This is precisely what it looks like when a turnout is immediately digitized with an advanced electric turnout drive system. So, now we're starting the game all over. Ensure the tongue sticks out here at the front. She does. And carefully put it back in there again. Put him back down. You are watching from above again. And then it goes in here with the screwdriver on the first side. And then it goes in here at the top on the second side with the screwdriver. And indeed, that should be very easy too. If there is too much draft, then it might indeed be a bit bent, or perhaps you are mistaken. So, you better do that a bit slower, if you may. Then it's properly in there too. And if you drill too much, be careful not to drill the small holes out. That would be a pity. So now it's going to be super easy. Look, because it just clicks in here. There is now indeed a designated place for that here, right up front. And then they just... Is that correct? Yes. Exactly here they are now securely clicked in. There are just notches in it. This is what it looks like at a turnout. You can see that quite well here. And with the other turnout, this notch, this clicker, is simply on the other side. Here you can see these three small plastic ridges. And now we can activate this decoder as well. Press down slightly and then it will also hold if the track is lying flat on the ground and you're looking to tidy it up again. Then, it's quite well and securely glued on here, fitting perfectly under this specific C-track from Marklin. So, I'll move it aside for us to access the cables more easily. 
Can that be fixed quite easily? And now, let's proceed to take the electricity here and initially connect two separate cables. So please, do remember the red one. Come to the side where B stands here above. B is written here. You can really identify that when it's just really small. Here is a small B to be seen under the track. And right here, it clearly says zero. And up there, it also distinctly says B and zero on the side again, without any doubt. And now, we carefully take the red cable and securely connect it to the B terminal. And the brown cable, we meticulously ensure that it's connected to the zero terminal. With these so-called flat plug sleeves, it is simply plugged onto this little tongue, onto this connector here, from the rail, from the track, precisely. And now we have another long yellow cable. So that fits wonderfully up there on the second B. The track couldn't be any longer either. Otherwise, we have difficulties. So, now this fits quite well here. Be careful not to break or bend the cables. And now we can click on this again, just like we did just now. So, tell me, is it actually true or not? Let's start with the one on top. And now it's really on. So now we have the track here, the rail, fully connected. So, we can turn our attention to this component on the side. It's just the mouse piano. And there you see now, they are all carefully set down, these turnouts. They all went down, precisely. And indeed, we'll just proceed to do that exactly as meticulously described in the provided instructions. Let's take a look at the back, how it's supposed to be here. And now we're doing this as the first turnout, as if we only had one. Then it says in here, the first one, so on is on top and off is on the bottom. So, now it can be seen better. Up is on, down off. And the lower one, the tenth here, says when it goes up, it is the so-called DCC protocol. And if it goes down, then it's either the Marklin Motorola protocol or the FX protocol. You don't really need to remember that now. Your mobile station can, in a theoretical sense, do both, but is usually set to MM Motorola. That means you just move it down now, the ten, and the one just up, then that's your first turnout. So, moving the one up and all the others down would mean, if I turn it on now, my turnout should work exactly. And we'll just control it, because I've already finished building the other one, and it should look exactly the same now. So, if you indeed look at this, then you actually see the first one is on top, and all the others are below. And that's how we do it with the other turnout too. Then I'll have two turnouts at the same address. This means, if all is done right, you must make a compulsory click. Because both turnouts should turn out simultaneously when I say on my mobile station, I want to turn out the first one. So, now this is connected here, the track. Let's do that as well. So now we have closed the circuit. This is very important. The rail or track must now connect to power and we can press stop on our mobile station or restart everything with the stop button. Now we have electricity on the track. So, and now if I press these four, so and now you see here these four buttons on the left and the four buttons on the right side. With the top button or the top two, turn out back and forth between pages. The lower ones don't do anything in this case. And the two middle buttons, they just turn out between red and green. And we would now just be on the left side at red and green. And if I press here now, then it should indeed work. Now both of the turnouts are activated simultaneously, without exception. Now we just need to give one turnout a different address, and we'll do that quickly. I press stop briefly and take out the second turnout again. And now we give it another address. And which address we need is again listed in our little turnout address book on the back pages. It's in there. So, I'll just go ahead and show this into the camera here, then hopefully you can read it. So, now you can see it. And at the second junction, it would now not be the first turnout that needs to go up, but the second turnout that needs to go up. The first one gently comes down, and then the second one goes up. Following that, we'll do just that and stop right here at the turnout. Now you just take a small screwdriver here, ideally a flat one. So, and now we just go here to the two and move it upwards. And if everything goes well, then our turnout should now turn out to two.
We'll put them back on. Just give it a try. If it doesn't work, mess with the mobile station and addresses. You might have pressed something wrong. So turn the turnout back on for now. Switch one goes here and switch two turnouts here. Und weiche zwei schaltet hier. So, also here red round, green straight, or here green straight and here red round. So that's the whole shredder. We'll view it again from above. Here, I'll place the mobile station beside it. Initially, the first turnout activates, whereas the secondary turnout also activates, effectively. So, we're ready for the next turnout. I brought another with me. Look, there is a very unique turnout included. This is indeed a double slip turnout. Let's just quickly put our steam locomotive aside for a moment. And we can now proceed to digitize and connect those components a little bit more thoroughly as well. I'll just take this down for a moment. It looks a bit different than other turnouts. Look, there's even a turnout lantern in there already. And in this turnout lantern, we could also connect a stream of light now, then it would actually automatically light up. This turnout lantern, you can also nicely install it in the other turnouts here. Maybe we'll do a different episode sometime. There is already a turnout drive in here if you buy these double slip turnouts because they need a bit more power as they have to control two turnouts at the same time. That's why there's actually a different engine in here and it's already installed in these double slip turnouts. Now we just need a new decoder. I'll remove the package from the old decoder. We'll keep the accessories, carefully set them aside, and now we just take another built-in digital decoder and proceed to install it, just like before. I'm leaving the instructions in now, because it works just like it did just now in the other videos, and this will now be our turnout three, indeed, truly. So, now we're actually doing the third turnout, we're taking out the vibrant wire here again. These are the three cables, so red, brown and yellow. We don't need them. And those, you've remembered where they're placed, right? If they fit easily here on the side, they're correct. Goes in strictly, so it's evidently the wrong way around. Then we'll reschedule it. Now it went quite easily. And now we take our double slip turnout into account. It's becoming a bit cramped beneath the track here, isn't it? Now we have to take a look. So first of all, we start here. And we could also unscrew those now, so we can get to it better. Can we also leave it in now, and try to see if perhaps we can get in there well with our fingernails? I'm going to do this now in such a way that you can see it perfectly. But to make it a bit faster, I'll just lie down here for a little brief moment and activate this in. So well. So, there it is. Inserted. And now we can proceed to click the drive into its place here on the side as well. It fits wonderfully right here on the side as well. There he is inside. And now we can also do this here. I'll take it out again briefly to access the cables more easily. Now, they're lying around suspiciously wrong. They have to go in the other way around. You see, there is just such a cone on the side here. That means we have to go straight in with red on the left side, where the B stands. It's essentially the same engaging game as with the other turnouts, faithfully maintaining the original gameplay dynamics. Here it is a little less space, so take it easy so you don't hurt yourselves. There is absolutely no hurry necessary indeed. So in here again. Yes indeed, it's securely on there. And now, we carefully take the yellow wire here to the other side, where B stands once again. I'll show it to you in a moment so you can see it. Now, you can see it. Very beautiful, isn't it? Now all the cables are correctly in, and now we can safely reattach the turnout drive here. I'm sorry, could you please put the decoder back on its place? You can actually hide the cables in there, just a little bit, to make it look neater. And now, we really need the address for the third turnout, and we carefully set it again via this specific DIP turnout. Let's take another look in the address book once again. What exactly is the third turnout we are referring to? It's here. Now you can read it. So the third option would be the first and the second are now on top. We set it up in this way and then it naturally continues from there. So now let's look at the other way around. The first up and the second up.
So by default, they are always all at the bottom, and it still works anyway. That's quite good. But if you want to adjust the settings, then just as described here in the address book. So we'll try it again to see if it works. Move the entire frame a bit to the side, scissors to the side, and install this here. Let's pull the cable harness here for the turnout lantern to the side. We're lighting that up. Now she would already have electricity because she is already connected to the rail circuit. Put this on here and this on here. And now you see it from above very nicely. So this would now be straight, for example, which means the train would pass through here and also the locomotive from there would also pass through to there. And now we can turn out on the keyboard. Now we have to go to page three. So that was page one, page two, or key one, key two. And now we go to the third option. Now we have the two here and the three there. And now we can't do anything because I still pressed stop. And now, as you can see, our double crossover turnout is already activating. So it appears the wire was still just a bit bent. There's still something on the track. So we have to be extra careful that they don't somehow become extremely rich through the pain. That when you unpack them, that they also work well. You have to be careful not to pinch the metal when securely mounting it at the back. I did that very nicely here, and that's precisely why it's not turnouting properly. Because you see, I wired it too tightly here. So, before it actually clicks in, please do try out whether they also shift smoothly and efficiently by hand. And here, as you can see, I was a bit too careless with the wire here. I weighed that one down too much. So, now it works. So if you bend it down too far, don't be surprised, then the drive is not broken and the turnout is not broken either, but you were just a bit too far down with the wire here and clicked it too tightly. Just little things, then you always get annoyed. Why doesn't this work now? Why is it broken? No, actually, you just weren't paying close attention during the initial setup process. So let's carefully plug it back in and observe. That's the beauty here. When crafting, such supposed mistakes occur and you instantly know how to fix them yourself. So, as it turns out, it effectively works, is completely free of charge, and now we have the capability to turn out electrically here. I'll show it to you again a bit further forward so you can see it a bit more clearly here in the picture, here with the other camera, because now you can see very nicely how it flies back and forth here. So, now we can carefully re-rail our locomotive and let it shunt really nicely, ensuring a smooth operation. And now, we're just going to proceed by carefully placing the locomotive right on here, just like this, ensuring it sits properly. Now, it's actually going backwards, so at this moment, we're turnouting over to the first turnout. No, actually, that was indeed the second one. The other first. So, it indeed necessarily has to be round. And now... So, once again, let me emphasize, well, there's no electricity circulating on the track yet. So, now she's moving forward and can drive over here with remarkable ease, demonstrating a smooth change of direction. On the third attempt, it's soft and reverses, then maneuvers very nicely here, showcasing its agility and precision in tight spaces. And turn out again, and now it goes up to the third track and can drive back nicely again. Let's have them momentarily stop, because now our second turnout is approaching. Now she can gracefully drive over to the round track located here. Dogs whirl, we. That's how the concept with the turnouts works, if you simply want to turn out all that with the mobile station. And you see, no cable clutter is visible on the track diagram. Everything's neatly stowed. You can view it again from above. This is how it looks on the carpet track. You can also screw it onto a plate, like here, and enjoy the model railway. So, and in the next row, we'll take another look at the signals. Have fun recreating. Make space for locomotive.